Good afternoon. My name is Reverend Jim Ernston. I am co-minister here along with my lovely wife, Reverend Lisa, who you will hear from later. Uh, welcome. Welcome those in the sanctuary here. Welcome to those on Zoom watching this wherever you are in the world. And uh, welcome to those on YouTube who can view this video at a later time. You are all welcome here today. So, if you are, well, let's go ahead and read our mission statement together. So, together, Unity of Charlotte is the place where we nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. Simply put, we are here to love, grow, and serve. To love, grow, and serve. If there's anyone here who is uh, visiting for the first or even second time, just gently raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. Thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> know that we have fellowship afterwards in the entryway. You're welcome to come and have a cup of coffee or some snacks with us and ask us any questions. We'd love to get to know you as well. And we are, I I'm getting, what? What? I don't know. Oh, we have another visitor? Is that what I'm being told? Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. I did not mean to exclude you. Know that also you can get information from our website, our, uh, our newsletter. That little monkey is our newsletter. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, and the bulletin board out there. The bulletin board has QR codes, everything for uh, signing up for things and uh, things that we don't necessarily announce on a Sunday as well. Let's go ahead and move into prayer. I invite you to make yourself comfortable here today. Closing your eyes if that feels comfortable and moving within as we move from our thoughts down into our heart space as we feel and know that we are here with the divine. <laughs> We are the divine, sharing this space with each other, knowing our oneness with each other, knowing our oneness with spirit, knowing our oneness with the world as well. And we're so grateful, so for, grateful that. for that. We feel that we feel gratitude that. within our hearts as well for this space that we've used over the year here with Wesley United Methodist Church. And we bless them. We bless them on their journey to wherever it is that they are being led. For we know the divine order is in effect with both of these congregations. And we're so grateful for that knowledge. And with that, we say amen. At this point, let's recite our unity prayer of oneness together. So, out loud. There is one presence and one power in my life and universe, God the good, omnipotence. And now's a chance where if you have somebody in your life or a situation of your own, a friend, family, here's the chance to say their name out loud as we hold that energy, as we hold those names and those situations in our heart. So say their name now. we hold each of these names, we hold each of these situations in our heart knowing that they are blessed. And it is so. Also know that if you are in need of prayer anytime, you can reach out to um, our prayer team through the use of the prayer box. We have a prayer box in the back or in the hallway back there. You can fill out a form and, and put it in there. Those names are held in confidence um, with our prayer team uh, for 15 days, and then they are sent to Silent Unity in Kansas City, which uh, they are held for another 30 days in prayer as well. Um, 
Those names are prayed over, and that is our prayer team that does that. Know also that you can um, reach out to Silent Unity with their uh, smartphone app, with a telephone number, or with the website, and they will um, accept your prayer that way as well. If uh, in the middle of the night you need prayer, that is a fantastic way of doing it as well. I'd like to invite up for our daily word, uh, both Fred and Warren. Today's word, the two, I am, very important word. I am a living expression of God. In the book of Exodus, Moses asks God his name. God responds, I am that I am. I am is the name of the divine presence within me. A reminder of my spiritual nature. Sometimes I may forget my divine identity by thinking of myself as weak, incapable, or unfortunate. If I have spoken disempowering words about myself, I release those thoughts and stop using those words. Each time I say, I am, I strengthen my awareness of the truth of my being. I am God's life, love, wisdom, and strength expressing uniquely as me. As I pay attention to my thoughts and words, I am able to recognize and release limiting thoughts more quickly. My awareness of my true identity grows stronger and stronger. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. Yo soy, yo soy una expresión viva de Dios. En el libro del éxito, Moisés la pregunta a Dios, ¿cuál es su nombre? Dios responde, yo soy el que soy. Este nombre representa la presencia divina en mí, recordándome mi naturaleza espiritual. A veces olvido mi identidad divina y me percibo débil o incapaz. Si he expresado pensamientos que limitan mi poder, el libro, estas ideas y dejo de utilizar esas expresiones. Cada vez afirmo yo soy, fortalezco la verdad de lo que yo soy. Yo soy vida, yo soy amor, yo sé sabiduría, yo sé la fuerza de Dios que me expresa de manera única como lo que soy. Presto atención a mis pensamientos y palabras para reconocer al hebrer las creencias limitantes, <coughs> mi conciencia de mi verdadera identidad de fortaleza cada vez más. Él le preguntó, ¿y ustedes quién dice que yo soy? En Mateo 16 y 15. Good afternoon, everyone. So, the title of our talk today, Power, Presence, and Play-Doh. So how many of you remember playing with Play-Doh when you were a kid? Okay, good, good. A lot of, you know, Play-Doh is like really still very popular. They even have it now scented, glittered, and even... <laughs> I'm sure it's very important to some people, but I was just kind of amazed um, when, I, when I went to go pick some of it at 
how much Play-Doh has expanded, which is really kind of cool because this, is, this goes right along with our whole idea. Because if you look at Play-Doh, it's like just this blob of, of what? Of potential. A blob of potential. Because what do we do? We take it and we go, hmm, what can I do with this? And we start thinking of creative ideas and we start playing with it. We start forming it. We start making things out of it, right? All from our mind onto this blob, which is just a formless blob initially, but with the power of imagination and act our own creative activity, we create things out of it. So today, and this might be a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> Corny, I know. But I want to take this idea of Play-Doh <laughs> and use it to talk about spiritual substance. Spiritual substance is a very important concept in unity. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Let me put my little blob of Play-Doh here for a moment. We'll come back to that. So let's start out with what spiritual substance is, as, as it's defined. The word substance comes from a Latin word, substare, which means stands under. Now, we take that to mean this is the foundation of non-material essence, non-physical essence, out of which everything else is created. So when we're speaking of spiritual substance, that's what we're talking about. But we're going we're gonna to look at that some more. Now, let's consider this from a scientific perspective for all of those that love all the scientific quantum physics things. Our universe is made up of atoms and subatoms and quarks, and it gets smaller, smaller, smaller. It's particles. Everything in the physical universe is particles, little particles that all come together and form different objects. And this is what we, this is what creates everything we call physical. But there's something even more important about these particles and that is the space between them. There's a space between all these particles. And science has been studying this space because they think the space is even more important to understand than the particle itself. Because they believe that space is a field of force and intelligence which acts upon the particle and tells it to become a tree or a body or a stand, an acrylic stand. But they've even gone further now to say the space, this, this field of force, of energy, doesn't act on the particle, but is in fact the particle, it's, it is space itself, expressing as a particle. Okay, can you wrap your mind around that? That's one of those where you sit and go, hmm, hmm. Space, the particle and the space are no different. The particle is this energy expressing itself as a particle for a moment. So why do we care about that? As far as I'm going in science, guys. <laughs> is in unity, our understanding of God or the universe is, is, it is the whole of things. It's allness. Universe means the whole of things. So we use sometimes the word God and universe interchangeably. It is the allness of things. And it is present in everything and through everything. And so we, like the particles, are not something God is acting upon, but we are actually God expressing as. Me, and you, and you. That's a radical shift in thinking 
from the tradition I grew up in, where God was an object outside myself, a supreme being who acted upon me. But to now understand God is the entire universe in creative activity, expressing itself in particles, and um, I happen to be one of those. I'm the particle named Lisa. But everything is God expressing. Now, that means there's no place in all the universe where this infinite substance can be more or less than right where I am, or right where you are, or right where anybody is. So right where I am, I have access to infinite substance. As a matter of fact, I am part of the infinite substance expressing as me in this moment. And this substance is our infinite supply within the invisible realm of mind. So we're really not talking about the physical level. We're really talking about the invisible realm from which all things begin before they are manifested into a physical form. So while there's no limitation in this infinite substance and supply available to me, I can experience the idea or belief in limitation. I can have the idea that I don't have access to everything, that all I have is this, and, and what I see and feel and, and experience with my five senses. And uh, this is all from Eric Butterworth's Spiritual Economics book. Um, Reverend Jim and I have been, have been paging through it, and I have picked up the chapter, The Truth About Substance. So a lot of what I'm pulling out is from this book. And in here, um, Eric Butterworth mentioned, talks about the idea of the difference between needs and lack. And it really struck me as a very important concept to help me understand the difference. Because he says, um, we do have needs in this world. We have needs. But we also have access to an infinite supply in the invisible realm with which to manifest a fulfillment of those needs. So it's not to say that we don't need anything. However, so needs can be fulfilled. Needs are, are something that we seek to fulfill through taking that infinite substance and going, oh, this is what I'm going to create. And we begin to mold it and shape it with our thoughts and our feelings, which is what Reverend Jim spoke to yes, last, last week. Lack, however, and this is our state of consciousness we're talking about, because we're moving now to the idea this all happens in our minds, not our brains, but our minds, our state of consciousness or our state of mind. And needs can be fulfilled through the practice of the spiritual laws that we teach as unity principles. Lack, however, can never be fulfilled. Because lack is a state of mind. Lack is a belief. You can't fulfill a belief of lack because it will always express itself as more lack. But you can shift your consciousness by claiming that not as your truth and remembering that you are an expression of God who is an infinite source of supply of substance with which we are then can create, and it's, our limit is our imagination. So I'll let you ponder that a little bit. I'll be here afterwards if you have any questions. But I really want to go back to the idea that it's really, we're, we're talking about consciousness. When we're talking about it, subs, this kind of, this substance we're speaking about, it's in our minds, it's in our consciousness. So Eric Butterworth, in his uh, book, Oh, I missed this one. This is, this is a quote from Eric Butterworth in, in the book, Spiritual Economics, to say, God is the allness of ever-present substance in which we live, move, and have our being. An infinite supply of every color and kind of Play-Doh you could want. 
Now, he took this scripture, and I'm going to uh, touch on this in here. It's from 2 Kings 4, and it's the story of the widow and the oil pot. And in this story, uh, it's about a widow who, um, whose husband has died and has left a large debt that she cannot pay. Creditors have come and told her that they're going to take her two sons as slaves in payment um, for this debt. So she is desperate. She goes to the prophet Elisha and says, please help me. And here's what Elisha says to her. The first thing he asks her is, what do you have in your house? The first thing he asks her is, what do you have? in your house. And here's her reply. I have nothing there at all. I only have a small pot of oil. I have nothing there at all. I only have a small pot of oil. One little pot of oil. This is what Eric Butterworth has coined the onlyness syndrome. Have you ever been, I know I have found myself in the onlyness syndrome, where the words coming out of my mouth, the thoughts flowing through my head are, I only have, I only earn, I can only do. Sound familiar to anyone else? I've been there. And this is, this is what a lack consciousness sounds like, a lack state of mind. So he then goes back to her and he says, okay, I want you to go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. And the next thing he says is don't ask for a few. I thought that was an interesting kind of statement to throw in there. We're going to come back to that. He says, then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into all the jars. Um, uh, and as each is filled, put it to one side. So she does this. She goes around and she gathers the oil. She does what he says. And as she's pouring the oil, it just keeps increasing. And pretty soon she's got all these pots of oil. So that's how the story goes. But there's a lot of lessons in this story. But I want to focus on this one. And this is what Eric Butterworth was really talking about. When he says, go ask all your neighbors and don't ask for just a few. He's saying, expand your mind, open your mind to the possibilities, reach out beyond where you've been thinking that you're limited and start asking and, and, and gathering and then take what you have and expand it. Pour it into those new ideas. So this is really, um, this is, he says, when we do this, we widen our horizon of faith. We identify ourselves with the idea we are inheritors of the boundless support of the universe. See where that shift comes from I only have to, I have this. What can I do? So this is, again, a shift in consciousness. So as we shut the door, which to me always means go within, begin to think of an affirmative truth of the infinite substance, which is at your disposal to play with, and take one affirmative idea and add to it, and then add to it another one, and add to it another one. Again, all in our minds. But the more you add to one idea, what happens to it? It grows. It gets stronger. And our mind changes about what we have and what's possible and what we can, what we can really do. He says in his book, when we stay conscious that the divine flow is ever centered within us, we live in the faith that limitless substance will find expression through us. 
because we're not cutting off that limitation now. Now we're open to that divine flow, and we're going to see what we are able to express through us from that limitless substance. But he says it will express through us in the form of creative ideas, ingenuity, the will to work, and the appearance of opportunities. Another sentence that really struck me, because it doesn't say it's going to appear to me as that money I need for rent right in front of me is going to materialize. It doesn't say that, oh, that person's just suddenly going to change and everything is going to be okay. It's not about bringing the material thing in first. It happens in our minds first. And what we are fueled by when we open that divine flow is guidance, in, it, divinely inspired guidance as to what is our next step and what can I do? And we begin to reach out and we begin to find opportunities and open doors. This is very much what I'd say we're experiencing right now as we're looking for our new space. Because I know I do, and, and as I'm sitting with the board, we say, no, we were, look at this amazing place we manifested. Our next place is going to flow right in. I don't know why we have to move. That's just what the universe is moving us to. I probably won't know till we get there. Maybe I'll never know, but all I know is it'll get better and better because I believe it. I feel it. I can see it. And so can your board members. And every time we meet with someone, because we've met with quite a few people at, at, at different churches, you know, even if it, if it doesn't seem quite right, we have a great time getting to know this person. Because who knows what doors we're going to open through every relationship that we make and every person that we speak. Two of our board members, Barb and Bev, have been on the phone calling, making calls and speaking to churches. Every time they speak to someone, they're like igniting a spark. I don't know where it will lead, but those that's like pouring oil into the different pots. And you end up with 10 full pots, 20 full pots. So this is, this is, a, this is how we are called. This is how we're meant to live our lives here. When we say that we're spiritual beings living a human experience, this is really what we're, we're called to be in this. It could look different for everyone, right? Because we're not talking about just the physical manifestation. We're talking about consciousness and how we are going to express ourselves in this world. Am I expressing myself with lack or am I expressing myself with the full abundance that I know is mine? which I want to say, abundance doesn't look like accumulation. That is a worldly idea because you can't accumulate infinite substance. It's already infinite. You don't need an accumulation. Well, and that's another fascinating idea. We flow, we flow with our, we flow with our abundance through giving and receiving and connecting. So, what are we called to do then? How, how do we bring this divine flow back into our experience? Well, I just say it's practice the power of presence. The power of presence is practicing the presence of God in every one of our situations. Big situations, little situations, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just constantly bringing our our. our a mind and hearts back into an alignment with the understanding that we are living in a world of infinite substance and we are expressing that infinite substance through our, our life, through our life. Eric Butterworth says, the presence of God is that of God which is present, wholly present, ceaselessly present, and it never changes. It never changes. There's not a single time that's not available to me. So let's remind ourselves that the activity of God, 
of spirit of divine flow is always working in us, through us, and around us. And I want to read, as I wrap this up, something from the last page of this chapter that I loved and is a call to action. He says, make a deeply rooted commitment that you will practice the presence of God's substance, ever reminding yourself that you are in the presence of an infinite eternal substance from which all things proceed. We remind ourselves we are in the presence of infinite eternal substance from which all things proceed. Resolve that you will live and think and work as if you really believe that the whole universe of creativity and substance were present in every project of your work and every transaction of your investments as your never failing resource. Lovely call to action. So here's what we've talked about. Substance as Play-Doh. So everyone needs to go get some Play-Doh, go home today and see how many amazing things you can create with it. But we talked about substance is the very essence of our divine nature. It is infinite and limitless and it's our supply for our need, for every need we have. If we're feeling a sense of lack, all we have to do is change our state of mind. We stop trying to change things out here because lack will never be fulfilled, but needs are always fulfilled. Let's let go of any onlyness syndrome. I only have this. I can only do that. I only, only, only. And fill our minds with the ideas of the spiritual truth and then keep adding to it. It's a lot of what we talked about in our affirmative prayer class. You find an affirmation and then you just keep adding ideas to that and it grows and it fills your being. And finally, as we practice more and more knowing and feeling the presence of God working in us, may we become more and more like hap a happy child playing with Play-Doh, knowing no limits to the possibilities of what we may form in our lives from the whole universe of creativity and substance. And so it is. Thank you. And just relax. If it helps, follow the breath in and out. Feeling light and love and expansion is with the in-breath. And relaxation, ease and grace with the out breath. Light, love and expansion as we breathe in. Relaxation, ease and openness as we breathe out. Feel yourself close the door to the outer world for just a moment as you come into your own sacred place within. That quiet place. As you relax, and feel a sense of opening, expansion, space, begin to feel 
the presence of God as this space. There is nowhere God is not. There is no space that is empty with God. There is a divine flow ever moving through this infinite substance within us, through us, and throughout this entire universe. The creativity of life waiting to be expressed through you in your own unique way. Feel the presence of God as your own beautiful soul. And we'll take a few minutes in the silence to allow this experience to deepen and broaden and expand. rhythm and flow of life in and out. But bring this experience of that precious substance that is you with you as you raise your consciousness to this room, to this place, to this time. Knowing wherever you go, God is, and you are that expressing. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Now's the time in our service where we move into an offering because we know that as we give, we also receive. I invite you to either take your gift as cash, as a check, as an image of your online giving, whatever it is, take that into your hands Focus on that gift as together we bless it using our prosperity blessing. So together, joyously I give this gift, knowing the divine presence blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have. The light of God surrounds us. We are light. The love of God enfolds us. We are love. The power of God protects us. We are power. The presence of God watches over us. We are presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. <laughs> 